Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So let me start today's video by asking you a very interesting business oriented question. And the question is that why do you think that diamonds are very, very expensive? You would say that it takes billions and billions of years for a diamond to get formed. It is very rare. Therefore, it is very expensive. And guess what? You are incorrect because a diamond can be grown in a lab in six to 10 weeks. That's how long it takes for creating a diamond. You will say that some people prefer natural diamonds, but honestly, to a normal person like you and me, we will not be able to separate synthetic diamond with natural diamond. But the kicker is that there is a company called as Ribius. At one point in time, it used to control almost 80% of supply of the diamond and it used to sell a lot of diamonds through its retail stores, which were situated all across the world and it made billions. Here is example number two. You would have seen this bottle. This is called as the Dasani mineral water. And guess how much revenue does Coca-Cola make by selling this bottled water? The answer is more than $1 billion a year. Why am I telling you these two stories? I'm telling you these two stories because there is a very clear roadmap as to how you can take commodity goods like diamond, like water and make billions out of it. Now, Mr. Gautam Adani is trying to do something similar with the cement space in India. Cement is a very clear commodity. He's picking up that commodity and he's trying to turn that into a multi-billion dollar industry. So I'm going to help you understand in a very brief manner whether or not he'll be able to do it, what his exact plan would be and whether or not you should be investing in his cement business. There are a lot of convoluted layers associated with this business. So if you like the research that I've done for this video and if you get benefit in any way, do press the like button. It will help these type of videos reach out to more people. So the old news is that Mr. Gautam Adani has acquired whole Sims two cement companies. One is called as ACC and one is called as Ambuja Cement and he has made his foray into the cement business. In fact, his son is now heading the helps of the cement business and therefore it becomes a very prominent area for Mr. Gautam Adani. He was asked that why have you invested so much money in the cement business? His response was that I see a lot of growth opportunities because India is growing. There will be GDP growth. There will be infrastructure growth. So of course, the cement business in India can grow quite exponentially. This is what all the news channels are telling you there is nothing new behind it. But let me tell you the hidden story behind cement and why or why not Adani's are going to dominate what specific actions they are taking. Let us study that in three simple steps. So the first key part about the business plan of Mr. Adani when it comes to the cement business is to gain scale. To help you understand why gaining scale is very important, you need to understand the backdrop of the cement industry in India. If you look at the numbers, you will quickly realize that cement suppliers supply 1 kg of cement at 5 rupees a kg or even less than 5 rupees a kg. Now the interesting part is that cement is the building block of everything, right from constructing real estate to bridges to towers and whatnot. Cement is used literally everywhere, but you have a situation where the suppliers are supplying cement at less than five rupees a kg. So why is that the scenario? So for this, you need to understand the supply chain of cement. This is a very good graph by McKinsey and it outlines that how complex the supply chain of cement in India is. So just a very quick explanation that you have these limestone queries. So this limestone is excavated, then it is crushed, then it is transported. And then finally, there are set of other intermediary operations that are undertaken and then cement is mixed in a cement plant and that is how we get the final version of the cement that is used in construction and for other purposes. Now, this supply chain is very, very complicated because there is a lot of transportation cost associated with it. Therefore, you might have often seen that when limestone is quarried, those khadane or those mines, they are located close to intermediary plant or clinker. But on the flip side, when the construction is supposed to take place, the final product is actually assembled at the construction site. All these operations require a lot of logistical challenges and involve a lot of transportation cost. So up until 2010, this market in India was very simplified. For example, the north and south part of India, they used to have excess capacity. So they used to supply a lot of cement to the entire India. On the flip side, the eastern and western parts of India, there was hardly any cement production. They were absorbers of cement. So as a result, the market dynamics played out really, really well. And whichever cement companies were there, they made crazy amount of profit between 2005 to 2008. After 2008, there was a crash. Then of course, the economy shrunk and a lot of companies suffered, including the cement companies. But there was somewhat of a golden age for cement companies in India pre-2008. Now, just to prove this point, let me show you the data 
or share price growth of ultra tech cement so for example you will see that back in 2005 this is the golden age the stock price went from 351 all the way till 1073 so there was a 3x growth in 3 years now what about in the last 5 7 years so even if we take the data from here so this is trading at around 4000 and this is from november 16 so almost 5 years in 5 years the stock price has not even doubled and here we are talking about one of the foremost cement oriented companies in india so what happened in this zone from 2005 to 2008 was that a lot of newcomers in the cement space they started seeing profit they started seeing that a hey, ultra tech cement is very very profitable bunch of other companies are very profitable so let us also throw the gauntlet and try to get into this market so they also got into this market so what happened was that between the period 2010 to 2016 17 there was a lot of excess supply of cement companies the supply of cement grew by 3x but the demand of cement only grew by 2x so unfortunately in 2020 we have reached a situation where this market or the entire cement market market in india is deeply fragmented for example here is a snippet of market share of different companies and if you consolidate these three companies they have approximately 60 65% of the market share and rest of the small players have very little market share now if we delve deeper into the manufacturing capabilities of each of these companies the top 5 companies in india they manufacture approximately 50% of the cement so as a result what is happening is that approximately out of 140 150 cement manufacturers in india hardly a handful of them are profitable so this leads to a situation where big players are somewhat profitable and the smaller players are deeply unprofitable so this industry is ripe for something called as mergers and acquisition so you will have a bunch of big players acquiring smaller players so as a result when the news came out that adani ji is entering the cement industry the price or stock price of smaller cement players also started shooting up so given the fact that this industry is deeply complicated from a logistics point of view number 2 the majority of the players in this industry are unprofitable number 3 big money is coming into this industry and there will be mergers and acquisition adanis are set to benefit and there are two three reasons for it for example i earlier spoke about the fact that cement industry is a logistics game there is a lot of transportation logistics involved and a company that has a moat or a business advantage here is likely to win so adani's specifically run a company called as adani logistics and they are a big player in this space already they already own ports they have access to crazy amount of financing on top of that they can get contracts for query mining they can get contracts for logistics management they can get contracts for final infrastructure development so to cut the long story short adanis are set to gain scale so that is their step 1 of this entire game so once they have attained scale the second step usually in any commodity based business be it diamond be in mineral water is to become more profitable so how are adanis going to become more profitable so there are two specific ways that they are going to follow so the first way is called as capacity expansion and the second way is called as cross subsidization so in case you are not a business student i will explain this in very easy to understand way and first and foremost take a look at this chart so this chart specifically shows that as a company becomes big it becomes more and more profitable the chart clearly shows that leading cement companies have outperformed the market over the last 20 years outperformed the cement market in the last 20 years so this shows that this industry is such that if you are a big player you are going to benefit more so size allows you to become more profitable with time you might have also read the news that both kumar mangalam birla bag ultra tech cement and adani ways ac C and Ambuja Cement both are going to undertake capacity expansions. Now people are telling you that you know what they are doing it because India is growing, infrastructure need is there, this that. No, that is not the reason. The point is that these two business houses need to attain more and more scale in order to make their cement business more profitable. Now the answer to this theory can be found out by this particular research paper, and I am referencing the authors here. This is by Delhi School of Economics, and you can clearly see from point one what it says is that production in the cement industry. is characterized by significant economies of scale consequently this industry can significantly reduce average cost by increasing output and this is the reason why adani bagged cement companies and kumar mangalam bagged cement company are both increasing their production capacity because if they do not increase it then one company will significantly fall behind the other so over the next few months we will definitely reach a point where the cement business in india will be a duopoly 
Duopoly simply means the existence of two big players. For example, in food tech space, we have a duopoly, which is Zomato and Swiggy. Similarly, in the cement space, we are going to have a duopoly, which is backed by Adani Cement and by Mr. Birla. Now, once business become a duopoly, there is a lot of scope for them to expand upon their profit margin. Now, how exactly they can do that? This comes directly from the playbook of Reliance Geo. So just to give you a very quick snippet, so take a look at this particular graph. And what you will see is that in 2016, there were two profit prominent players in the telecom space. One was Vodafone Idea and the other was Bharti Airtel. And there were a bunch of fragmented players in the telecom space in India. Then flash forward 2021. So what has happened in 2021 is that Reliance Geo has zoomed in to become the number one player and it had negligible existence in 2016. It has become the largest player here. These companies have literally gone away and even Vodafone Idea is getting crushed. So this is too is becoming a duopoly. And you might have also noticed that Reliance Geo is constantly upgrading its price. So this is the data from 2019 and you can see that how sharp the price rise for Reliance Geo plans were. But here is the interesting part about the story. So I started the video by talking about diamond industry and water industry. Basically, when it comes to these type of industries, the market needs to be educated as to why it needs diamond. For example, there have been so many ad campaigns that have been run around diamond. Similarly, there have been so many campaigns that have been around why you should be drinking mineral water. So there is a lot of market education cost involved, even when it comes to Zomato, Swiggy, etc, etc. But when it comes to things like telecom, when it comes to things like cement, the market is already built for these type of products. Now, to complete the final piece of the puzzle, you must understand about product stickiness when it comes to cement. So cement is a necessary product. And what is happening in this industry is that as the suppliers, for example, Kumar Mangram Birla and Adani's, as they become stronger and stronger cement suppliers and the entire cement market depends on them, what can they do? They can increase the price of the product. But on on the flip side, the buyers of the cement would have very limited negotiating power. So this is precisely how Adani's are going to become extremely profitable when it comes to cement business. Now, before you sell your house and decide to invest all your money in ACC and Ambuja cement, please hear the final part of the story as to what you should be doing as an investor and what is precisely my viewpoints regarding these stocks. So there are three specific points that I would outline. So the first and foremost point is that yes, ACC, Ambuja Cement and Ultratech all will become profitable with time given the scale at which they will expand and the type of negotiating power that they have. But this, however, entire process will take a lot of time because there will be significant mergers and acquisition that will take place in this industry. And that itself will take a lot of time, effort and energy. Whatever spikes you are seeing right now, it's not necessary as if that these spikes are going to continue in terms of cement stock price growth that will cool off in the midterm. You have to give this process some time. Second key point that as Adani's try to capture more and more cement companies as they would, they would require a lot of money and that will lead to further debt expansion of these companies which becomes a slightly risky proposition, especially if the business environment is not conducive for real estate growth. So please be aware of that. Third and final point has to do with the conglomerate nature of the businesses. Now, one of the key reasons why Adani is going and acquiring these cement based businesses because it is profitable for his own group of companies when it comes to Adani ports, Adani infrastructure, Adani logistics, all will benefit by inclusion of cement business in the conglomerates group. Now, it might very well happen that this cement business might just be used for cross subsidization, which simply means that let's say that Adani infrastructure is building a bridge, the normal cost will come out to be 1000 crore for that bridge. Now, because they own Adani cement, they might be able to procure cement at a lesser price. So they might be able to complete that project at 800 crores. Who benefits from this? Is it Adani infrastructure or ACC or Ambuja cement? The answer most likely is Adani infrastructure. So you have to make that call as to which business is going to benefit with the inclusion of this cement business in the group. So according to me, it's the infrastructure port business that will benefit more compared to the cement business itself. And for that reason, I will not be investing in ACC or Ambuja cement. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I will see you the next time.